Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, we are in Monroe, Michigan. It is a dark and stormy day here in Monroe, which is appropriate because we are standing in front of the Michigan Museum of Horror. This is actually a fairly new attraction. It only opened uh, about eight months ago. So I'm very excited. It's the first time I've gotten a chance to come out here and visit the Michigan Museum of Horror, a celebration of all things horrifying and ghoulish here on the uh, streets of Monroe, Michigan. So please, Follow me. See here, right on the main street of Monroe, Michigan, we have the brand new Museum of Horror. I'm excited, let's head inside. Here we are inside the Michigan Museum of Horror. Oh, check out, check out this skull here. All right, so you can actually hold a, a human skull here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, one's pretty sturdy. Sturdy one? All right. Look at that little guy there. Got some little bit of a little bit of facial damage. Thank you so much. See here we have a wicker casket. Now I've heard some different stories uh, that I've heard before that these were wicker so that water could seep in when it's underground and not lift it up out of the ground. But this says here that these are used for uh, for transferring kind of a temporary casket so you can put a body in here temporarily this can be reused and in fact this one actually is uh, it is used it says it used Victorian era so see some of the stains and the little pieces in there oh my god oh, you would have the the uh, the dead person's uh, pillow there it says that these could be transferred easily because they're much easier to lift and transport than uh, than a, a wooden coffin. Oh, look at here, we got ghost face lurking. Oh, can you see who it is? You can see the eyes there, but I can't tell. Can't tell behind who's behind the mask. Here we have some uh, jars of fun, different animals here. Now, there is a a puppy in there, but it does talk here about uh, that it is a, they, 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 they put this puppy, a stillborn puppy, in a jar. So he was born deceased. They put him in a jar to give him a second chance to exist, says all wet specimens are ethically sourced, meaning they're not just killing animals for the sake of putting them in jars. Down here we have a Ouija board that's been sealed by a witch. You can see the bindings and the wax sealing there. It says this was from a Detroit tavern. They were using the Ouija board. They got spooked by some of the creepy things the board was saying so they tossed it in the dumpster they said every day they would toss it in the dumpster and it would show back up in the tavern so they actually had a witch come and seal the evil spirit inside with the binding there different pieces of murder bilia here you see the black dahlia murder site they have soil from the black dahlia murder site as well as some uh Soil from the site of H.H. Holmes' murder castle. The piece of uh, a robe worn by Eileen Wardos when she was receiving her last rites for her execution for being a serial killer. Now there's some soil from one of the Zodiac shooting sites of the Lost Boys. This is dirt from the Santa Clarita Bridge where they hung off the bridge there. A the little piece of Alcatraz. This is the Al Rosa Villa nightclub carpet swatch. That's where uh, Mr. Dimebag Daryl there was killed during a performance. A piece from the cemetery from Night of the Living Dead there. 
some remnants from uh, the crimes of Elizabeth Bathory. And oh my gosh, I was not expecting to see this here. This is pretty cool. What we have here is a piece of mogwai fur. This is a piece of fur from Remlins 2, which one time after I had my tooth surgery, I went, I went, I posted a video where I went on a painkiller fueled rant about how Gremlins 2 was the best movie, best movie ever. And uh, yeah, there it is. Like, uh, I love, absolutely one of my favorite movies of all time, Gremlins and Gremlins 2. An actual little piece of mogwai fur. You can see it's rolled up in a little ball, like when they would uh, get wet, they would multiply little balls of mogwai fur, would fly off them, and then grow into full-size mogwai. So that's pretty amazing. Some witchcraft items, including a specialty made witch's broom made for a real witch. It's a witch's flail, a witch's item used to actually put curses on people. And this is a 1904 Ouija board. It says that they've actually used this here in the museum and uh, have been able to contact spirits using the board. It's a letter mailed from Charles Manson there. Down here we have some death masks of some horror icons. Of course, Bela Lugosi, he uh, played Count Dracula. Boris Karloff played Frankenstein. And then Vincent Price, just one of the most delightfully creepy men that ever lived. Have some more human skulls there. And uh, a real human hand. An autograph mask by uh, Jason Voorhees, and uh, it says this is salmonella infected peanut butter. It says people died from eating uh, peanut butter from this batch in 2022. See, it's got some tape on the top, I guess, to keep that salmonella inside the Jif peanut butter. Also, Jif is the peanut butter associated with the, uh, the Mandela effect. People claim that it used to be called Jiffy. But uh, it's 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 called Jif, and apparently it has salmonella. Vampire killing kit, all the things you need to murder a vampire. Of course, the stakes to put in the heart, the hammer to pound the stakes into the heart, the crucifix to repel the vampires, and a picture of Jesus. The vampires really hate that. There's a license plate used in the Bates Motel TV show. You know, I never, never got around to watching the uh, Bates Motel TV show. Definitely love the original Psycho, but never got around to watching that. Maybe uh, in one of these days I'll go back and, and binge that if I ever have time to binge anything ever again. And here are some booths from the movie Van Helsing from 2004 had, featuring a, uh, I know that was a movie about a monster, monster hunter based on Dr. Van Helsing from the uh, original Dracula. Oh, this is pretty cool. This is a mold used to make the mask from the movie Trick or Treat. It's a really fun Halloween anthology movie there. They make uh, Sam's mask. Sam, a little, uh, little pumpkin-headed guy, was used to, uh, to make the mask. Very spooky dolls there. This is Eloise Asylum Cole. Yeah, it says Eloise Asylum was a psychiatric facility in uh, Wetland, Michigan. And uh, various teeth there. I always notice this squirrel hanging off the staircase there next to the Creep Show and Salem's Lot poster. Oh, there's one of those symbol monkeys. I used to I used to think these were literally the scariest thing in the world. I don't know why, they just they just really got to me. It's a horse skull there. Some spooky, spooky dolls back in there. There is a shirt used in The Walking Dead. I'm not sure what character 
before that. And that'd be interesting to go back and try to figure out which character was wearing this shirt. I just noticed the carpet here is the uh, carpet from The Shining. All right, this is the adults only room, 18 plus. So I don't know how much of this I can show you. We got this door covered up by a body bag. So I'll just have to blur stuff out or cut stuff if it's inappropriate. Oh, it looks like a looks like a murder scene in here. Oh, we got Chucky and his, uh, his bride there. On the walls here, they have different photos from murder scenes. Uh, this is Jack the Ripper right here, his, uh, his victim. Got some very graphic photos here on the wall. Yeah, I probably probably can't show you guys much of this. This is <laughs> pretty, pretty intense stuff. All right, we're gonna head upstairs stairs here. Oh, look at that. It is the, the giant skull. I think that's the skull of a 12 foot tall Home uh, Depot skeleton there. But uh, as we head up, we see the bloody handprints on the wall. As we head to the second floor of the Michigan Museum of Horror. Up here, there's a lot of funerary items up on the second floor. Also see some uh, horror icons there. Got Mr. Freddy Krueger there in his iconic green and red uh, sweater. I, you know, I, you got these horrible burns on his face, and then he wears this sweater. I always just think about like how itchy that must be and how horrible that must be. It must irritate his uh, his burns. You, know, you think with burns, you'd want some light fabric on top of it to allow your skin to breathe, but he chooses to wear this sweater. I guess that just kind of gives you a view into the, uh, the psychotic mind of Freddy Krueger. And here's Mr. Michael Myers. You know, Halloween, the original Halloween, I think one of the best horror movies of all time, one of the, probably the best you know, quote unquote slasher movies, you know, following the the uh, plot line of a, a, a deranged killer, like, uh, like stalking people. And uh, yeah, it's truly really amazing. The movie still holds up to this day. You can go back and watch it. But uh, man, he had a rough run of movies in recent times. The, uh, that uh, new trilogy, man, that, there was some, some missteps in there. Like, like for instance, like in, in Halloween Kills, how did they, uh, why did they think that the other guy was Michael Myers, a, a man that was much shorter, had completely different body size, and they had actually seen the real Michael Myers without a mask on TV, but somehow mistook a, a different man that looked nothing like him for Michael Myers. And then, and then the, 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 the third movie, Halloween Ends, like Michael Myers was, was hardly even in it, they kind of tried something new. They tried uh, tried a plot where there was like a new Michael Myers, which 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 would have been okay. But then uh, in in the end, it, it just they just kind of killed that plot off and just had Michael Myers fight Laurie Strode. So probably not a good way to end a trilogy. You know, I'm all for creativity, but um, it's just a weird way to end. You know, a trilogy where you've been building up to a showdown and then instead of that. You focus most of the movie on a completely new character who just gets like killed at, 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 at unceremoniously near the end of the movie. It's uh, you know, some, some odd choices. Some odd choices. A lot of people say they like the first new one. Ah, it was okay. It was. It was. Uh, you know. It was. Uh, it was okay. And. Uh, it, they, uh, they, 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 they forgot, they, 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 they redid, redid the continuity, they made it so Laurie Strode wasn't his sister, which I understand why they did that. It's just, um, you know, just interesting to, to play with long-held continuity like that. That's another thing. Michael Myers, there's so much, like, trying to track the continuity of the movies is nearly impossible. There's, like, I think, I think at least, there's at least three different lines of continuity breaking off from the uh, the first movie plus you got the Rob Zombie movies so yeah it's 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 all a huge 
horrible mess. And I say, just go back and watch the original. It's, it's good. And watch the second one too. The second one's pretty good as well. <laughs> yeah, Freddy Krueger, Michael Myers, two of the most iconic slashers of all time. Say, yeah, uh, you know, Jason Voorhees doesn't appear to be here, but between these two and Jason Voorhees, probably the three, uh, definitely three of the four on the Mount Rushmore of slashers. Some might put Leatherface as the fourth, um, the fourth head on the Mount Rushmore of slashers. Although I don't necessarily consider Texas Chainsaw to be a slasher movie. I consider it to be a different type of movie. In fact, when they made that that newest uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, they kind of missed the entire point, in my opinion, and just turned it into a generic slasher. When that's not really what the uh, the original that wasn't really the the vibe of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But anyway, I'm talking a lot about Leatherface. He's not even here. Jason's not here. These two are here. These definitely are two slots on the Mount Rushmore of slashers. But uh, here is the new kid on the block, the newest um, slasher icon. That is, uh, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm Art Art. I almost forgot his name. Art the Clown. He's from Terrifier. I've not seen Terrifier 2. It's supposedly one of the most gory, disturbing movies of, uh, of, of all time. I did watch part of the first one. It, it was a little, uh, I'm just going to tell you. I, I, know, I know a lot of people out there, a lot of my friends, a lot of people, uh, my acquaintances do, and do like this movie, uh, these, the, these movies. And I think this guy here, he, he, he does a good job. The, the, the character itself is super creepy. He doesn't talk. He like moves like a mime. But uh, man, the gore, the, the gore. And, and you know, I have, I have friends that work in the gore industry that make movies that make gore, but it was a little much. It was a little much for me. Um, you know, there was, there was a lot of blood, a lot of cutting and guts. Yeah, he just carries, this is this part of another thing that makes him disturbing. He just carries just a bag of horrible weapons that he uh, uses to torture people. He has all his torture implements in there. I think it actually, at some point, he actually just uses a gun. Like, I, I would, you know, it's kind of interesting because it doesn't necessarily follow the rules of the slasher. These guys are here. These guys would never, ever use a gun. Almost no slasher would ever use a gun except for Art the Clown here. But uh, yeah, I don't know, the first movie, I, I, for one, I thought the poop scene was a bit much. It's like a scene where he smears poop everywhere. And uh, I don't know, that's, I mean, that's <laughs> as far as gore goes, that's almost worse. You know, I, I, I didn't necessarily sign up to see a clown play with, uh, with turds. But uh, yeah, it was, it was intense. It was intense, you know, just not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. There's, you know, a certain level of violence that um, I just kind of tune out towards. Um, I, I don't necessarily find violence that scary. In fact, it's Michael Myers, he, um, in the first Halloween movie, there was hardly any blood. It was all like implied. And a lot of times I think that's scarier. The implication of horror, the implication of what might happen rather than the, the explicit and visceral showing of murder and carnage. But if you do like the explicit showing of murder, carnage, blood, and poop, I think maybe, uh, maybe art your guy. I don't know. I, I, I've thought about giving Terrifier 2 a chance just because it has such a, uh, such a crazy reputation. I don't know. When, when Halloween comes, I'll, uh, I'll reconsider it. Let me know in the comments section. Should I check out Terrifier 2? It's like up there we've got a, uh, a hair wreath. A lot of times when people would die, they would take their hair, turn them into wreaths. This was back in Victorian times. Make these beautiful wreaths completely out of hair. Over here, these are child casket shipping crates. Again, I, 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 they're not, well, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Is this, uh, is this a shipping crate used to ship child caskets? Or is this a shipping crate that has been recycled into a child's casket. I, I'm not sure which one do you think it is. Leave a comment in the comment section. There's another wicker casket up here. And like I mentioned 
downstairs. I think, you know, there's a lot of uses for, for a wicker casket. Um, it talks about how you can use them to transport bodies easily, so you don't have to lug it like a, like a full-sized heavy casket. But also, as I mentioned, you put it underground in, in a place with a high water table, and you don't have to worry about the coffin popping up out of the ground because the water will just seep in to the wicker coffin. Also, great for burials at sea. You toss this overboard in the ocean, and it'll sink to the bottom. You toss a normal airtight coffin over, it'll just float around like some unholy boat for the rest of eternity. Some funeral memorabilia in here. These are like programs from funerals. See in remembrance there. This would have been at this uh, this little boy's funeral. Nothing nothing sadder than like a child's funeral. That's pretty depressing. Down here a little doll in a, in a morning gown. Some fine uh, funeral suits there that uh, you can dress up on one of the most important days of your non-life. Some antique embalming fluid bottles. And uh, yeah, it takes a lot, it's a lot of work to make an unliving body look like a living body. I actually have a lot of, uh, a lot of respect for people in the funeral industry. I think for a lot of people it is important to be able to, to say goodbye. You know, in some parts of the country, like you know, in the southern part of the country, um, open open casket funerals are common. So uh, I think it, it it does a lot to be able to say goodbye, to see the person for one more time. You know, not be able to see them as a person, but but, but to just see that they are at rest. And um, you know, it is very helpful if the body, you know, does look like it did in life. You see different things there, like jaundice control cavity embalming fluid. Yeah, a lot of work goes into that. There is some flesh spray that's neutral. Neutral flesh. Some more, I guess, spray-on cosmetic there. Some embalming table there used during the embalming process. And uh, oh yeah, these signs that would you'd put out during a funeral to keep people from uh, Parking, you know, you need a, a lot of people coming to the cemetery. You need uh, need ample parking, and uh, these are actually for sale. These funeral signs here it says ten a hundred dollars for the uh, the uh, no parking funeral sign. I guess these items are all for sale, including the uh, little baby doll there. But you got casket keys. Oh, okay, I guess this is like for locking a casket. Why do you need to lock a casket? I mean. Is the person inside, are they, are they, are they coming out? But uh, probably more so to keep uh, grave robbers out of the casket. But, uh, oh yeah, they have some uh, different embalming fluids for sale here. High viscosity, hmm. Are these what I think they are? Are these urns? Is there human remains? inside there it's uh 25 30 pieces. i'm not 100 percent sure what these are but i think they might be urns if you know what these are leave a comment in the comment section over here you have this really cool hat is this a is this what you call a fez a fez hat i think this is uh oh, what is the secret uh secret the shriner it's a shriner hat i don't know if i don't know I uh, would consider trying out a new hat, but I, that might be considered uh, cultural appropriation. Yeah, here's some of these, these tubes that would be used to be inserted inside people uh, to help fill their body with new chemicals. Now that is a child casket right there, and I don't see a price tag on that. I don't know that that is for sale. More items back here. These are just uh, pictures, vintage pictures. I used to collect vintage pictures back in the back in the day. I loved loved getting pictures of uh, of people I didn't know. It's always I think they just I don't know when you don't know the context. It almost tells more stories. There was one time where um, my ex uh, Christy bought me 
a uh, an album. It was a, a family photo album, and it was it was such fascinating. The lady it was the lady that made the album was named Pauline Smeltzer, and um, she. Uh, had an interesting, such interesting photography, and eventually I was able to return the album to its uh, to the family, which was pretty pretty rewarding. These are casket photos, so literally, okay, yeah, literally photos of caskets. There, I guess this would be like, um, you know, the funeral director selling the caskets would have these pictures. Let you try to see what caskets they had, help you pick out something nice for your loved one. Yeah, if I really wanted to start my own funeral home, this would be a good place to start. So all this great stuff is for sale. Also, they have a, some sort of duck, some sort of duck up here. I don't know who Alan Hale is, but uh, there's his gravestone for sale here. For, uh, for $50. It's another embalming table here. You have these fans. These are, I think, church, church fans. They give these out during a church service so you can fan yourself. It's another walking dead shirt. This is a blue long sleeve shirt. And then have some, uh, some coffin nails here. These were used in The Walking Dead. It says season five, episode eight. Carl uh, nails a church door shut using these coffin nails to help keep the zombies out. And over here they do have just a beautiful view of Main Street from up here on top of the Horror Museum. And look down the other shops on Main Street. Oh, look at that, how appropriate. <laughs> just a hearse, a hearse just drove by. <laughs> oh, that couldn't have been more perfect. This is like a little miniature vault here. It's a vault sample. Just show people what the burial vaults look like without having to bring out a full-sized vault. This is a Thai spirit house. It says, shrine dedicated to the protective spirit of the building or home. So the offerings are left to appease the guardians and to keep them from causing harm. So people leaving quarters and uh, dollars. And someone even left a skeleton key there, I guess, to help the spirits protect the uh, Michigan Museum of Horror. It looks like here we have a fortune telling room. You can see all the, all the fortune telling tools in here. Uh, definitely smells, you can smell the, uh, the incense. Definitely smells like a fortune telling room in here. Some tarot cards there hanging in the window. As I'm coming down the, uh, the stairs here, I notice there's there's a deer head, and that's like not a taxidermy deer head. That's like a dried up, mummified deer head. Must have been like 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 laid in the woods and dried out. Oh, I've never seen anything quite quite like that. Yeah, it's a buck's a buck's head there. Okay, this is the reason that those monkey things scared me. Monkey shines. Now, I remember seeing this, uh, my, my dad's girlfriend at the time, uh, when I was growing up, she had this book on her bookshelf, and um, I, I was just terrified. I couldn't even stand to be in the same room and, and see this book. Like, literally, my entire focus of my life was being scared of this book. I would, I would ask them to move it, and uh, I'd have to be like talked down and explained why it was okay. I was so curious about it, I asked them uh, about the story. And I think what happened is, this is kind of a, a weird thing, but she actually made up a story that was not obviously not the real story in the book about how uh, there was a bad monkey and a fairy uh, made him good. Yeah, it was made up. I, but I, went, I, went, I went the whole time thinking that was the actual story. And then when I was, when I was a teenager, I saw the, the VHS and I rented it and I was baffled because it wasn't the same story. In fact, the story has nothing to do with this monkey at all. This is just the cover art. The real movie is a movie about uh, a, a, a lab that, that, that creates super intelligent monkeys 
and then the monkey, who's a helper monkey for a uh, paralyzed man, actually becomes evil and starts torturing the paralyzed man. Completely different. I mean, that's still a horrifying premise now that I think about it. In fact, that's really scary. Monkeys are terrifying, whether they are flesh and blood monkeys or toy monkeys with symbols. There's more items for sale down here. These are rattlesnake, rattlesnake ribs in a vial. There's octopus tentacles. It's a jar with a scorpion in it. You can even take home a bunny in a jar. Some, okay, you can get some Night of the Living Dead gravesite soil and some holy water. You know, that just might be good to have on hand, to be honest. Here's some horror themed Christmas ornaments in case you just, uh, you just, uh, can't let go of Halloween. Some butterflies here, as well as some bats, kind of the gothic version of a butterfly. And you can actually buy real human bones here in the gift shop. You can buy chunks, skull chunks there, or human rib bones. And this is, uh, this is horrifying. You buy human brain pens. It's just got a chunk of brain inside of it. Oh my goodness. Here's some vials of dirt from Salem, Massachusetts, and a Jeffrey Dahmer cutting board that says, I've got to start eating at home more. <laughs> oh my God. And that's actually a real quote, a real quote that he, uh, he made. Uh, different stickers to choose from, different uh, horror themed stickers. And there we got a, one of the critters from uh, Critters. So I've taken to collecting pins for my hat. I've uh, never got into the, the patches, mostly because uh, they don't know how to attach them to things, and I'm afraid, uh, I'm embarrassed to ask anyone. Speaking of horror, as I've been in uh, Michigan, I've noticed these bugs everywhere. I don't know what these are, but uh, yeah, I've seen people with their cars completely coated in these dead things, and they're just covering every building. I've seen giant piles of these dead bugs. What are these things? And uh, why are they here? Does anyone know what kind of uh, insect these are infesting the poor state of Michigan? Yeah, I just, I'm having trouble getting over it. Look at these, look at these things. Look up there at that street light that's just completely covered in whatever these are. I, 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 this is unpleasant. So thank you for joining me here today in Monroe, Michigan to check out the Michigan Museum of Horror. I talked to the, uh, the owner, he said he's, he's in, kind of in the process of renovating, looking at new things to bring into the museum. Since so he's doing some events as well, gonna be doing a, um, a wrestling event here in the upcoming weeks, which sounds pretty uh, pretty fun. But uh, thank you guys so much for coming along with me. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country. I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. If uh, you'd like to help contribute to the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. Three dollars or more, we'll get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop, including four new carpetbagger cryptid monster faces. You can buy all four for a discounted price or just pick out one that you really like. And uh, also doing a cameo, doing personalized messages, uh, birthday messages, anniversary messages, uh, just for fun messages. And uh, if you're interested in that, just check that out in the description. And uh, of course, all that helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.